someone has made a mistake or two or even three in their life. Even with your parents, you probably don't realize they made a lot of mistakes in their life. And on the way home, you can have them share some with you. I know I made my vast few mistakes that altered and changed my life. But when it comes to juvenile delinquents, a lot of people look at juvenile delinquents as lazy, poorly educated, bad parented. Share my story. At the age of 16, he was a pretty good basketball player. Pretty good. 6'4", good looking, had hair. Six pack. I don't know where all that went. There was a church in the city of Detroit that would open up the gym to keep young black males out of the streets and not getting in trouble. So we would go to this gym every week. I had a good friend of mine's. I'll call him Lee A. I was 16, he was 14. And Lee A was rambunctious. He liked to get into a lot of stuff. You would think he was the older one, but I was. We go to this gym. We're playing basketball. It was pretty good. He was pretty good. And we're beating some older guys in the game. These guys are like 21 or 25. And the guys couldn't take losing well. So what ended up happening, they started to bully us. They started to call us names, punks, bees, 304s. Parents, you can ask your kids what 304s is on the way home. And what ended up happening was we left. We left from the gym. We felt disrespected. So I was driving. I had a fairly new car, 1978 Granada, driving home. Thought we were done with it. But my buddy Lee says, I don't like the way those guys did us. We need to go back and scare those guys. Just play a prank on them. I said, OK, cool, no problem. So we go to Lee A's house. We go to his room. We grab a large duffel bag. We place some items in the bag. We zip up the bag. We begin to laugh in a sinister manner. We arrived back at the church. The bag was in the trunk of my car. I pulled my car within two feet of this gym. There's only one way in and one way out of the gym. As we pull up, you can hear people laughing, joking. You can hear basketballs dribbling, people having a good time. The bullies were still in the building. Pop the trunk. Unzip the bag. And we reached into the darkness. Once we entered that gym, all the laughter and the joking stopped. The A had a 12-gauge shotgun. I stood there menacingly with a Winchester shotgun. I don't even know if it worked because the thing was kind of swinging and screws was falling out, but that's besides the point. When we walked in, Lee entered the room. Who the punk now? Who to be now? The guys threw their hands up, man, we sorry, man, we sorry. And the guys began to run all over the gym. Lee ran after these guys, made them huddle in the corner. To me, the joke is over. We're just supposed to scare these guys. Lee got more amped and started to grimace start squinting his eyes. And at that point, I'm like, man, I'm supposed to be going to college. I'm a basketball star. This is not going to look good on my resume. There's other people that's in the gym, and they're trying to get out of the gym. And that's the moment where I realized I am not a gangster. So the people that were trying to get out of the gym, beyond the three guys, they wanted to get past. So I'm holding the shotgun. I'm like, OK, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Y'all go ahead and get out of here. We don't have a problem with y'all. But as I'm looking at my buddy Lee, Lee barrels down on the three older men. Boom! 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 I'm like, oh my God, man, we were just supposed to scare him. That was the day my life changed. Three, two, five, seven, nine, inmate. The judge gave us 40 years juvenile life sentence. That's the maximum amount of time you can get. Felony firearm, terrorist threat, murder, holding hostages. I was just 16 years old. 
That was almost my story. I'm actually no stranger to crime. I have 25 years in law enforcement. 10 of those is in corrections. About another 15 in executive protection. I protected everybody from Eminem, politicians, a bunch of the elite around the world. I've authored five best-selling books. I did make it to college to play, you know, play college ball. I played pro ball in China. If my buddy would have pulled that trigger, this guy wouldn't be standing here. That was almost my life. So let me tell you the backstory. When Lee A bared down on these guys, I ran over to him, snatched the gun from him, ran to the car, threw the guns in the car. We pulled off, we got out of there, and my buddy Lee A continued to be so animated, imitating the guys. Please don't kill us, man. Please don't kill us. Listen to your boy. Please don't kill us, man. He thought that was funny. I didn't. I knew that day that was the end of our friendship. Two years after that, I graduated from high school. He graduated to juvenile detention. Another two years after that, I was in college. He began his stint of a 10-year prison sentence. The point that I'm trying to make is, for the teens and the family, be careful of the company that you keep. It is so important. It is so important. It's amazing to be able to become this guy and not this guy. Yeah, I like that guy better. I like that guy better. Um, the biggest thing is parents and teens, you have to work together. The biggest thing that I find wrong, the misconception in the business is what happens with teens. Cell phones and social networks are linked to crimes. Cell phones lead to social networks. Social network leads to bullying. Bullying leads to school shootings. It leads to hacking. You'd be amazed. I'll give you a quick example. Anytime that there's a carjacker or armed robber or home invasion of a teen or anybody that's committing a crime, you have your cell phone in your pocket, you walk into that place, it pings off the tower. It pings off the Wi-Fi. If someone carjacks somebody, they do a ping to find out how close you were in proximity of the person that you were actually robbing. It's nowhere around it. So now your phone is actually a witness against you. The biggest mis misconception of juvenile delinquency, well, I'm just going to put them in a youth home. I'm going to put them in a youth home. There's no rehabilitation there. We feed them, we clothe them, and we hope that they move on with their life. You could probably only save 5% of these kids. The other 95% are going to be repeat offenders. It's the parent's job to do the rehabilitation. And the biggest problem with that is you have to find out what that kid's passion is because the passion leads to crime. If a kid, is, his passion is surrounded by cars, he's going to be a carjacker. A carjacker is nothing more than a, a car salesman. His job is to get you out of the car before you want to. Grand Theft Auto, a guy that does that is a stock car racer, a mechanic. His passion is around the cars. If you have a kid that makes fentanyl, ecstasy, he doesn't realize, or she doesn't realize, they're a pharmacist. Go to school to be a pharmacist. What we call in Detroit, that's called hustling backwards. You're actually good at what you do, but you're doing it in a legal way. Now, this is another part. This probably doesn't apply to you. But bad parenting styles and juvenile disrespect to others. This is one of the biggest problems with juvenile delinquents. There's some people that are bad parents. Of course, not you people in the room today. But there's some people out here that are bad parents, and then some of today's youth are very disrespectful. They have no tolerance of authority. Right. Here are the 10 warnings 
with parents and children. Peer pressure. I always tell parents, when you have young kids, pick their friends early. My father was great at that. My father told me years in advance who was going to prison, who was going to die, and which girl was going to get pregnant. Stay away from her because I don't want to be a grandfather no time soon. This kid is going to jail. This is a good kid. So he made sure that I hung around those type of kids. So similar lifestyles and parenting. Youth, teens, kids, seek wisdom. We know y'all smart. You know, anybody that has a teenage, teenager in their house, you know what I call the teenagers? That's the IT department. They fix your phone, update your computer, GPS, you name it. Seek wisdom. You guys have knowledge, but you don't have wisdom yet. That gray, the loss of hair, that's wisdom. That's wisdom. Now, I know that the teens tend to think that Google and YouTube are the digital parents. Siri is their sister. And whack, was, I call it what, Wikipedia? It's like the wacky uncle that thinks he knows almost everything. <laughs> Seek wisdom from your parents. It's a wealth of knowledge. Accountability. Parents and teens need to be accountable for all their actions. What I need the high schools to start thinking about what I do today, how is this going to affect me tomorrow? How is this going to affect me in five years? How is this going to affect me for the rest of my life? Because every decision that you make is going to follow you. Had I found a better way of pick better friends, he wasn't a bad guy, but pick better friends, I could have ended up in jail. I would be just getting out actually three years from now at the age of 56. When they, I would have went in at 16 and got out at 56. Not cool. Poor parenting styles. I'm not an expert, but you, parents, you know what's right and what's wrong. Uh, and you know your kid, you know your product. You know your product. Um, just, just be more wiser with that, because a lot of times we get kids that come into the facility, it's just the parents just stop caring. Parents don't, they won't listen to what their kids gripe is. A lot of times these kids will tell us what's going on in their life, as far as bullying, uh, depression, overeating, drug use. We can't get so involved in our own life that we forget about the kids. Five, toxic teens. Everybody knows one. Everybody knows one. I'm not going to point anybody out, but everybody knows one. Every mom and dad has that one kid that you secretly can't stand. You can just nod your head. The camera's not on you. It's okay. Uh, parenting is a priority. And teens also being a child is a priority. You only get one mom and dad. And they only get one of you. Life is not that long. I'm telling you, that picture where I was 16, I feel like yesterday. It goes by like that. Make each other a priority. Family blueprint, family blueprint. Find out what your child's passion is and accelerate it. It's a talent. It's actually their gift. Because if it's not used the right way, they're going to have to come and see me and they'll wear one of these. That's just the honest to God truth. Sharing is caring. Now, what I mean by that, parents, sometimes, I don't know, I tend to overshare. I will share with my kids some of the things that I've done in the past. You can't tell everything, because we all know if they had Twitter and Instagram, a lot of us would be in trouble especially from like Woodstock 1 and 2 and maybe the Freak Leak in Atlanta, so we're not going to talk about that. Uh, but share some of the uh, details of where you made a mistake and how you should have done better. That's very key because our kids tend to think that we're perfect. We're not that much different than the teens. The only thing, only thing different between us 
and our kids is we perfected. I mean, we created everything you guys perfected, but we, we started. You know, we, we did all that first. Parents, listen. Just listen. Take some time out every week to listen to your child. Just listen. Now, you know, we're not going to agree with everything that they're saying. Some of it's going to sound ridiculous. But in there somewhere is some golden nuggets. Ten, gun safety. This is one of the biggest issues. This is one of the biggest issues that we have in juvenile. Very simple. Parents, lock up your guns. Lock up your guns. Because you don't know if your child is being bullied at school. You don't know what's going on if you're not paying attention. Had Lee's parents locked up those guns, that would have been part of the problem alleviated. So I want to recap here. For the most part, if you have kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, find out what their passion is. If they're a little, they get a little out of hand and they're getting older, that means they have a lot of energy to burn. And if you don't find the proper way for them to burn the energy and you keep them in the house, they're going to end up wearing one of these suits. I see it all the time. Lastly, this is, a, this is a, a big deal where I see where a lot of the kids from the rural and suburban areas, I said with the gun safety, have to be very careful on providing kids weapons for birthdays for the sake of sport and recreation because everybody's not mature enough to handle that. Okay? I hope that my speech was helpful to you. My name is Byron Williams. And this was the making of a juvenile delinquent.